My name is Quiva. I lived in Janine refugee camp for the year of 2002. In this year I was to witness not only the brutality of the occupation, but also the resilience, hospitality and humanity of a people who refused to be broken. My own engagement with this struggle was deepened from an ideological one to a far more painful one, that of love and respect for a refugee camp that became home. When you're surrounded by violence, it's a very human reaction to try to struggle for people to be allowed basic human rights. One has a responsibility, you know, to, to stand by, you know, not necessarily to stand up, not to be removed from the people, you know, that you're trying to protect or trying to minimize the brutality that they suffer on a day-to-day -day basis in any way that you can, but to stand with them, to coexist, to live, to breathe, you know, to exalt in, in, in their strength, you know, and, and, and to try and comfort them in the times, like the times that we're all living through now, in which people are suffering a level of pain, you know, that, that most human beings, I think, would break underneath. But some of you are afraid of any one Palestinian, they want to kill them. I mean, I don't know كان هو كان ايوه جوزي حامل ابن الصغير هذا اللي شفتيه. اخذوا الجندي منه اعطوه لسلفته وعشان اطخه. هذا كان سؤال حميد شو كان؟ I internalized a lot of the pain and trauma I was witnessing. Leaving was no longer an option for me. I felt a responsibility and need to stay. Janine had become my home, but it was a dangerous one. Quiva Butterly, a pro-Palestinian peace activist, has no doubt it was the Israelis who shot her. The tank could see me very clearly. It opened fire and I was hit at close range. 